Hi there. If you're watching this video, you're probably searching for a solution to one of the most common problems um, that most people that do interior real estate photography um, have. And um, or maybe it's the first time you're, you're, you're facing a situation or you've done it before, but your process seems very inefficient. Now, I'm just going to share with you my own call it amateur process because there's always people that make comments on these videos that they have way superior techniques and that mine maybe are um, it's a waste of time and whatever maybe so uh, but regardless I just want to show you exactly what I do now for example this is a situation where you're taking both the inside and outside There's a huge balcony here and a lot of times we don't have the perfect day a lot of us would love to have the perfect day to take a, a photo and um, where the outside and the inside just blend perfectly um, with nice blue skies. In this case, yesterday I took this photo and the skies weren't great at all. Um, so uh, what I did is what I usually do, I always shoot brackets. Um, I have a balanced exposure here uh, where uh, at least the inside lighting, I always shoot, well, it can be, uh, you can have three exposures, balanced, over and underexposed. I first expose the photo for my interior um uh, some people expose it for the interior and use flash i did use a flash and bounce it off this wall the wall that's to the um the, in the kitchen over here and so it gave me a bit more light on the inside and then i did similar here you can see that there's a flash some sort of of um uh light lighting here a bit i didn't have a powerful flash it's just a regular speed light that i'm shooting off camera and um, here you have an overexposed photo. So what do I do? Some people um, believe in using HDR. Some don't because they think it makes the photo look too um, surrealistic, not realistic enough. So I'm going to fast track. I'm not going to show you the merging process. I use um, photo um, Maddox, uh, to, to merge these, these, these photos. And I merge these three. One, two, three. And I'm just going to show you what the output was. Once I had merged them, this is the output that I get. Um, if you look at this photo in comparison to any of these three, you'll see that it's pretty clear that the merged photo on its own without any changes um, looks way better than, um, than the photo alone. So let me just open it to show you. I don't want it. To... Oh. So, whoops, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so this version here, this is the finished version, um, and you can see all the changes in the history. Uh, so I'm thinking of the way to make this much shorter for you, uh, but this is where the photo started. This was the original um, merged photo, and this is where it ended. Well, more like here, because I burned some stuff in after. So what I did was, I, op I did use the first, um, uh, the first photo, the first merged photo, and this is what it looked like. Um, some of the lines are bent. And I'll show you. Actually, I need to go back. Let me pause this for a second. So I'm just going to go and close this photo for a second. Let me just close it. Don't see if I can try to reproduce exactly what I did. Um, so I'm going to open the first photo that didn't have any um, changes. This, sorry, that's the same place. So this is the original photo. There's a few things that I don't like. I don't like the fact that the sky looks pretty white. Again, it was a sort of a white, gray, and cloudy day. Um, so what I went and did is, and this is the benefit of, of, of shooting in brackets, is um, I, I look at this one, and this one has probably the most detail in the sky. So what did I do, actually, is I shoot both in RAW and in JPEG, and that's a whole other thing. Why shoot in RAW and why shoot in JPEG? Um, and I use the RAW image. And really, I only care about what's going on here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bit of curves here to get some depth. And um, I'm going to change the color just a bit. I'm going to increase the saturation a bit. And then what I'll do here is I'll just do a gradient from here to here. See that? You can see, like right away, there's no blue, there's no detail up there. Once I just, if I just add this gradient right here, and again, some of you people might be gradient pros and know how to do this way better than I do, but this is what um, my method is. Let me see if I back this up just a little bit. Um, 
from there. That adds some more detail, more yellow. Add a little bit here. You can see there's some changes in the sky. Um, In any case, I'm not going to make this perfect right now, but I'm just showing you what like the technique that I used. And let me see, take away some. If I add whites, it, it takes away a lot of details. If I decrease the whites, it's like that. If I um, let's see, I take away, I increase some shadows a bit. And okay, so it's not the most perfect day, but either way, I want to show you this bit first because really, I'm just going to use this little bit. Add change of color just a little bit more to give it a bit of yellow, maybe. Mm -hmm. And okay, this is going to be really rough. So I'm going to open this layer again. This is just to show you what I'm doing um, with the with the background here. So you obviously we've got this great base now, and then we've have have here. So what I would do, and this is why I use the other layer is I'll just basically drag this on top of the layer holding shift down and you'll see that now we have two layers now here I'll create a layer mask and I will do edit fill to fill it black which hides that layer and now I want to reveal here so this is a very fast way of doing this I can use this um, what's it called quick selection tool and I just quickly select this area because it's a quick selection tool and then I get my brush and here in the opacity I don't put it if I did it at 100% here's what would happen you can get like this and then down here you'll notice is lighter so let me deselect this for a second there are different ways of doing that now to me that looks very fake that looks very painted in and I personally don't like that. So what I do is I can then change the opacity here so that it's not that bad, not that, that, that drastic. And so if you look at the difference, it might seem very, very subtle, but in the end, it'll make the photo look a lot, a lot nicer. Similarly here, I can um, select this area down here and uh, select this area down here. And once again, I select my brush. I'm gonna turn the opacity down a bit that's because a lot of times when there's glass, it automatically makes the area darker. Up here, there's no glass. There's a glass here on the balcony. So I'm just going to paint it a little bit to make it subtle. I'm going to unselect that. And there you have the difference between that and that. And one other thing, because these photos, this photo was merged, um, you'll notice up here looks a little light. Um, and that's part of, of um, HDR, the, one of the things I don't like is that the shadows and stuff tend to be off. So what would I do here is I'll actually select this area and I'm also gonna paint it just a little bit so to darken it. You can see there. And then I'm gonna darken here just a bit. So there's there before, and after, before and after. Again, I can play around and make this perfect. If I wanted to but that's just basically how to show you how to fill in the that um, background and now I'll merge what I would do in this case again there's different ways of doing it is I would just merge these two control E and I'd look at my lines just to finish off as I showed in another tutorial how to straighten these lines and you can see that they're a bit off um, and I'll go in and I'll fix these lines up um, actually let me do it really quickly I'll show you how quickly that process is and I'm, I'm not gonna necessarily walk you through every detail about how to do this but create a layer edit transform warp and just pull slightly here straighten that and there's a bit of a warp here can I use a 10 to 20 millimeter lens on this so there's a bit of barreling just really want to correct that quickly Again, once I'm doing this for a client, I'll take a lot longer at this. And then, remember, I haven't even started to, let me change now, I can change some curves a bit, add a bit more light to this, to the inside. I could have probably done this first, add a little bit more here. And because I lost some details in the sky here, I'm gonna paint it back in black, just to um, hide the, the changes I made with the curves, so I can get back some, uh, let me put this back to 100%. So I can get some details back in the sky. It was a little dark, so I don't mind it being dark here. 
And now, as someone had asked me in one of the other videos, uh, they said they used the dodge uh, and the burn tool. So I will. I also do that. I create a layer. And then if I wanted to uh, lighten an area, I just dodge it out a bit. And, you know, just to add. And then if you do want, of course, you can burn more if you wanted to. For example, this area is a little dark. You can then, you know, burn, burn some burn here a little bit to make it slightly darker and bring in the details. And uh, there you have it. So I'm going to go to history and show you. This is the photo without those few changes. And here's the photo with the changes. Um, let me know what you think. Obviously, I could spend more time on this and get more into detail, show you how to really, really blend this really nicely. Um, but this just basically shows you the difference of having a photo like that and having one of these, which um, as you can see, is, is basically night and day between this. Let me just open it in Photoshop also, uh, the balanced image, so you can see the difference. We have that, and then we have um, that image. So uh, let me know your thoughts, and um, if you have any other tips to help this even get better, let me know.